This video was created purely for entertainment purposes only. Everything in this video is my opinion and is not meant to harm, hurt, or misinform anyone. Audio and video clips edited from content found on YouTube. It is all a figment of my imagination. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And this is where the story gets extremely weird and genuinely creepy. The research into the artifact's location accidentally revealed and possibly confirmed that there are layers to reality some may consider unsettling. You see, according to declassified files released in August 2000, they may not only have succeeded in their mission to locate the artifact, but also stumbled upon something entirely unexpected. A powerful and potentially dangerous non-human intelligence their agents came into visual contact with several entities resembling beings commonly found in Islamic eschatology and Middle Eastern folklore. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men. Viral emoji Demon Sigil Saga continues. Our emojis, the modern day hieroglyphs, the number one language in the world. Let's check it out. With this thought in mind that they're building the new world, the Tower of Babel re-babbling again from Mystery Babylon. Tower of Babel all the way to the future Mystery Babylon. Completed is language and all of technology based off of demon sigils, which has even worked its way in through the emojis. I had this one case and what occurred repeatedly for the first while, this case lasted several years, but for the first while, my cell phone would ring in the middle of the night hmm. or it would buzz with a text message, but the number was a nonsensical number or a number that from an area code that just didn't exist or it was suppressed you know 23 years ago and the text messages would say nasty horrific things you know leave her the f alone she's ours we're gonna break your legs or some other kind of threat so i would block the number and and it just wouldn't phase it the number would still get through the same exact number or an entirely different number and even if I powered down the phone, I would just, some time would go by and, and then I would hear a ring again. So the phone was just powered up by itself. You are watching Highly Motivated, a Jesus loving channel where we watch wild conspiracy videos and learn about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The truth hits different and cuts if you're living a lie. Welcome back to Highly Motivated, <laughs> where we have addicted ourselves to the ministry of the saints. Today, we are going to be getting into the different symbols that are found in modern circuitry that look eerily similar to occult or satanic sigils. We've got the CIA's search for the Ark of the Covenant and a little bit of helio sorcery or trickery, as I like to call it. And we have a psychic's experience with demonic or satanic oppression, unclean spirits, 
things that became attached to her after years of practicing divination. We've got all that and so much more. As usual, we will be covering some scripture at the end. So buckle up, get comfy, and let's get into it. First up, we have a new video featuring the Vegas Dome with yet some more symbolism. The Vegas Dome did it again, y'all. I don't care what y'all say, bro. The, the eyes are going to see to see this shit, yo. They breaking the firmament, right? Pete, who do y'all think that would be, yo? If that was supposed to be, you know what I mean? I think that's somebody that they are expecting, bro. And then Pete this shit. Is it just Yo, me? this just happened like... Or is there also beings behind this thing? Two hours ago. Bro, what do y'all think that is, bro? Not even trying to hide it. What is that symbolizing, man? Come on, you know. Y'all already know. You know exactly what it is. Oh my God. That truth in plain sight is real. Look at this shit. Yo, those are unclean spirits I don't care behind if him say too. This is for a concert or show. Do you see right above his head that looks like a face? Like what is that even supposed to be? Um, uh uh NASA takeoff, you feel me? Bro, this is subliminal messaging right here. Just my personal opinion for entertainment purposes only. CERN. What else do y'all recognize about this, right? Peep this. Pay attention, yo. Do y'all see uh, it? Or yep. not? Lucifer! Pete! Yo! They're light bearers. Come on, y'all. Look at this shit. We need to pay attention to the Vegas Dome, y'all. Wow. Oh my God! The little G, God of this world, who is blinding the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. Now we have a few testimonies of people who claim that they experienced spiritual oppression, starting with a woman who was a psychic for many years practicing divination. And so I thought it's a good idea to share something that was shared by a former psychic who was raised Catholic, but along the way, she was doing all sorts of psychic stuff. And since I said in the last video that I wanted to bring more awareness to the danger of the occult, I think it's a good idea to share what she's saying here. And as a former New Age practitioner, she's also confirming a lot of what Father Daniel Rehill said about Taylor Swift as well before. I was exposed to the supernatural, not in a good way, at a young age. And at 13, I had my first tarot card reading. That was when I started to seek it out. So yeah, from 13 all the way to that moment, which was in my young 20s, uh, when the mediumship started, I was visiting tarot card readers, numerologists, astrologers, coffee grind readings, and I was doing them. So not only was I getting readings, but I was giving readings as well. Again, I, it's important to mention that when you practice divination, you are communicating with demons. You are not communicating with dead people. So these demons were multiplying in my life with every reading it, it actually it breaks my heart every reading that I did and it's no surprise to me that it got to the point of getting the when they started to visit me to give me information to deceive I was deceived and deceiving other people parallel or yeah parallel to doing these readings I had moments of happiness in my life but predominant anxiety uh, constantly being bothered by these entities and I mean I was seeing demons manifesting right before my eyes they started touching wow. me I was hearing from them all the time and this is where people need to be so careful psychic mediums may say well I know how to turn it off and turn it on and tell spirit to step back and when to step forward and that's just not true they're around you all the time with their sinister agenda and I could just be in random places hearing from these familiar spirits uh, and thinking I was helping people, but it be familiar spirits. Now they have information. They can pretend to be your dead loved ones because 
they have been around since the times of the Nephilim. These are the abominations of things that were not allowed. They had no, they were not ordained to exist, right? God did not have a plan for these things to exist. It was the fallen angels who were out of the will of God that created these beings. So they had nowhere to go when these beings were unalived i guess i have to say whatever energy was allowing these beings to live did not have a place to go and so it's just been roaming the earth ever since they've died and how many of you have had psychic readings and if you have ever had a psychic reading was it a positive experience or was it a negative experience I'm really interested in knowing because before I came to the knowledge of the truth, before I came back into putting God first in my life, I had a psychic reading. And for me, it was not a very positive experience. Um, I, I ended up crying and the things that they had to say to me were things that I regret in my life. And of course, an unclean spirit will want to bring up something that you completely regret. I became fearful at times, too, because they were around me so much. I, I became fearful. And here's the part where she talked about Taylor Swift. I'm happy to actually speak about it. I'm very passionate on this topic. And of course, we're seeing it not only with Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Madonna is such a repeat offender, uh, Lady Gaga, but Taylor Swift presents as this Christian looking innocent girl years ago. And then you see the darkness boldly, blatantly when people are already Swifties. They're already hooked. Her music. Yep. Boldly promotes new age ideologies and concepts. Karma, the invisible string theory. You already had me at that part, right? So there's an invisible string wrapped around your thumb, your pinky, whatever. And there's one wrapped around somebody else's thumb or pinky that you've crossed paths with at some point in your life. And because of that, okay, you are really met, maybe that's your, here we go, shift into another new age, because that's how the new age works. One equals another one equals another one. Twin flame, right. soulmate, that must be your soulmate or your twin flame. It doesn't matter if you're married. That's okay. You don't want to let this chance pass you by. To satisfy men's carnal lusts and appetites. You want to go for this invisible string. We crossed paths. We met at the grocery store seven years ago and again at the 7-Eleven. Wow, this must be, I mean, I'm really kind of, but the idea is that once again, that you have this energetic soulmate twin flame, which are all uh, lies and doctrines of demons. And she survey said it's total she pushes these all out in, in her music. And then what happens? Then you have it go viral. But back to Taylor, who really is a serial dater and then is telling yes. us about oh my these relationships and dropping demonic symbols. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it at the Super Bowl with, well, I shouldn't say that she did it. I'm sorry. Her friend did it. Forgive me. However, we are seeing her uh, doing witchcraft on the stage and people have no. a way of justifying it, making excuses for it. That's just choreography. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, right. Um, just like we're seeing. Yeah, please tell me why the choreography for your concert has to involve you wearing a hood, a red or a black hooded cape, standing in a circle with all kinds of occult symbols like that's just happens to be your artistic choice. You and every other artist, mainstream artist, that's just art. I don't think so. It's no coincidence. It's because of Satan. Being at the Olympics, what they did at the Olympics. Because I happen to know some Christian ladies that are calling themselves Swifties, letting their young girls listen. And when she promotes, I hate to belabor the point, but when she, when she promotes anti-Christian, you can listen to, I'm, I listen to secular music, you know, I, I do from time to time. Uh, but I would be very discerning and very careful when you have, I mean, having um, sexual immorality in it, 
feeding this false Jesus communion. And it's just very sad and painted Christians as hillbillies that don't know how to spell. I think that you have to, I think when it's so in your face, I would, I would steer clear of that. For the next several clips, what I'd like to do here is share something from the priests. And I decided to include these clips here because of what that former psychic shared just now in regards to the spiritual attack she experienced. And so I thought it's a good idea to share what the priests did when they are under attack by the demons. So we'll start with Father Carlos Martins. Now, I did keep one of the testimonies from a priest. Um, it was interesting, so I thought you guys might want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Renee? One case, and what occurred repeatedly for the first while, this case lasted several years, but for the first while, my cell phone would ring in the middle of the night. Huh. or it would buzz with a text message. But the number was a nonsensical number. Or okay, well, and here's the thing. Just because he is a Catholic priest doesn't mean that he can't have spiritual oppression, especially, actually, because Catholic doctrine is inherently antichrist. There is one mediator between God and man, and it's Jesus Christ. It's not a priest. So it's not shocking to me that there would be priests out there being spiritually oppressed. A number that, from an area code that just didn't exist or was suppressed, you know, 23 years ago. And the text messages would say nasty, horrific things. You know, leave her the F alone. She's ours we're going to break your legs or some other kind of threat. So I would block the number and, and it just wouldn't phase it. The number would still get through the same exact number or an entirely different number. And even if I powered down the phone, I would just, some time would go by and, and then I would hear a ring again. <laughs> so the phone was just powered up by itself. So for a while wow. I had to, to sleep with the phone outside my room but it was really just a while. As we peeled the demonic relationship off of her, then these kinds of ancillary things started to, to fade away and die down. The demon lost his strength. And then there's also one from Father Daniel Rehill here, and I think this is in a way more related to what that former psychic talked about just now. But I had an encounter with a woman who was practicing witchcraft and all sorts of occult things. I didn't know it, but immediately after we put the pieces together, but I had a wedding in a different parish. I went up and did the wedding. This woman happened to be there. She, I guess, targets priests, it sounds like. And within a day, I was in like the most soul-crushing desolation that I've never felt this in my whole life. Even you know, and I'd really want to say, I, I really wonder if this is why the word of God says to let no man lay hands on you suddenly, because if someone who is not saved and does not have Christ in them touches you, their like negative energy can like rub off on you. And this is why we renew our minds daily, because lucifer the devil he can attack your mind and he can use the people around you to attack you and so this is why we stay in the word of god we stay sound um we stand firm on sound doctrine and remain unmovable because all the devil needs is that little opening to give you a little bit of leaven and next thing you know you could be falling off the deep end living in my pagan years as a sinner nothing like this where you just can't pray you feel like you're doomed to hell you feel like there's nothing that's going to save you even though mentally i know all that's not true and it just overtakes you physically it's like ugh. so a woman on my team who is up in that parish called and said does that not sound familiar um, we have brothers and sisters who have felt that exact thing. And that is the devil messing with your head. There's no way that if you are saved and sealed and you believe and trust in that gospel, that Jesus Christ would ever leave you. He is in you 
You are his body. You tell the devil to kick rocks. You know, she's having all these same symptoms, and so is one of the priests up there. And she didn't know I ever had this. And I go, that's exactly what I'm experiencing. And so I said, "Come, can you get here for direction? We can talk about it. So she came to the parish. We started talking about timelines. When she met this woman is when it started for her. The priest there, young priest, when he encountered her, it started for him. It took him down for two weeks. He was in bed. And then the day it started with me was when I was at the wedding. And so I just said, well, we're going to stop right now. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God. First of all, we forgive her for this, whatever she's done. We ask God to come into it and bless her. And then I broke things off of everybody. And it immediately lifted. And I was like, wow, if there's ever proof, you know, if you ever wanted proof that that was that, there it is. And that was a big lesson for me because I'm like, you know, when people say they think they've been cursed, I'm like, well, what did you do? And I'm like... I encountered her. That's it. And she just put her horns up and said, I'm going after that one. So you live, you learn. You know, that's also why, you know, if you are into like crystals, they are not inherently witchcraft or negative. But if you go into a witch shop and you get a crystal there, you don't know what the person selling them has done to it. You even have to be careful who you accept food from there are many stories on social media of women saying that they did a spell on their boyfriend by making them spaghetti and putting their menstruation in it that's disgusting to make the guy obsessed with them just recently that gypsy rose blanchard chick i, just, I can't stand her had a video where she was making Ken spaghetti. It was the first and only time she ever cooked for him, she said. And that's what you made him. And she just so happens to be from an area where the women, a lot of the women are very into voodoo. It's part of like their culture, supposedly. So you never know. I know that's not a chance that I'm willing to take. <laughs> Emojis, sigils, and computer circuit boards. What do they have in common? Viral emoji demon sigil saga continues. Are emojis the modern day hieroglyphs, the number one language in the world? Let's check it out. With this thought in mind that they're building the new world, the Tower of Babel re-babbling again from Mystery Babylon, Tower of Babel all the way to the future Mystery Babylon, complete. <laughs> is language and all technology based off of demon sigils which has even worked its way in through the emojis look at every single one of those side by side to that circuit board prince and power of the air energy I've done several videos before about the components of circuitry and electrical components all resemble these demon sigils, which also resemble the ancient Nordic runes or paleo wow. Hebrew or ancient star markings slash constellations, all tying into the spiritual realm and fallen spiritual technology and beings. Plenty of engineers have left me comments saying that they thought that people were just bored when they put designs into circuit boards and they look exactly like some of these demon sigils. This whole suppressed old world where the entire earth is a grid, an electrical grid. You can see how pyramids and circuit boards or cities and circuit boards from an aerial view look identical. Yes. Circuit board, fiber optic, and lasers all come from post-World War II Nazi neft tech. Werner von Braun and others given secret occult fallen angel tech. And exactly. Project Who did the Nazis say they were in contact with? The tall whites. Who do you think that would be? my guess well i mean and it's more than a guess it's a very educated guess they were fallen angels that's exactly what they were i'm not guessing that's what they were that's what they were paperclip some of these scientists were funneled in to the united states yes they Science, were the word and the origin itself is very interesting as well are some secrets of alchemy and the elements which we'll be getting into in the future i showed you a list of how some of these summoning sigils look like a diagram of some electrical components also, that whole story with Ben Franklin and the kite, and the kite being a summoning sigil for the Lord of Power, reminds me of the gravity story with an apple. What's up with all these stories? Are they even real? So anyway, with this Ben Franklin discovering electricity story with the kite, 
the demon summoning sigil for the god of power, and then all the L-words tying into electricity, elite, and other L-words I've covered before. Is all of this technology a way for fallen spirits to interface through? And also, why do some cymatic patterns also look like sigils, and frequency has everything to do with the spirit realm? Wow, Open. now that cathedral was built years before our modern world knew what a resonator was allegedly now we know we know that there were people in charge elite um the controllers if you will they knew exactly what they were this it's a in the first photo it's a modern printed desktop circuit schumann resonator the second photo is the floor of Chartres Cathedral in France. Now, you mean to tell me that that's just a pretty design? No. Opening doors. Sigils and star markings found all over the old world, kind of like phone numbers that open up doors. This all even ties in with stuff like Ohm, future plug coming, and other mandalas in the whole ancient world just giving us frequency displays. This totally right. ties into the entire matrix grid that we're all connected to. What's up with all these 5G towers? 5G, Penta, Graham. This Dang. is all for entertainment, by the way. How does this connect to mania, the devil's tongue, Hollywood, elite celebrities, reptilians, pretty much. The tongue is a steady flow of blood, a powerful visual representation of TL Tech to Hill. I'm butchering that word, but you can see it. Devouring role and the symbol of the divine link between human sacrifice and providing sustenance to the Aztec gods. Therefore, this gesture is a sign of Satanism or Luciferianism and mockery to God. Then down below, you see a picture of Krampus with his tongue. Dang. Theory of everything. And of course, the device that we're all holding in our hands right now. Is this smartphone based on the Kabbalah tree of life itself? And all this technology, spiritual technology, that we always carry with us all the time, all based on demon schedules and this entire electric circuit board right. that we're all living on, and even made its way into the number one language in the world, possibly now, emojis, modern day hieroglyphs. More coming yep. soon. Until then. No. <laughs> Do we wonder why God poured out grace? There are a lot of very sin conscious people out there that don't realize how baked in to society sin is. This computer that I am recording this video on is a black mirror. The meds that we take are sorcery. Every part of our society has it literally, literally built in. And so now you know why when Jesus got on that cross and he forgave the sin of the world, past, present, and future, he took away the devil's number one tool to pulling people away from God. Sin is no longer the issue. So what has he been doing? He's been hiding it. People are saying that the world being forgiven is a heresy. Where do you think that's coming from? What do they even think? There are people who profess to love Jesus that think that it's a heresy to believe that the world was forgiven. But the problem is, is they don't, A, they are probably in a modern perversion. And B, they're probably not reading it either. So... The devil's done a bang up job of hiding the greatest gift that God ever gave us. And before we move on, I'm going to prove it with scripture. I'll put it up on the screen for you guys to read it too. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. I'm probably going to read to 21. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now in verse 19, what's it say? Reconciling the world. Who's the world? 
everyone. Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And how do you get that righteousness? By believing and trusting in the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The moment you hear and believe and trust, you are imputed the righteousness of Christ. No longer you who lives, but Christ who lives in you. Listen, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, Kevin. Is that what Nick Cannon doing all them damn babies? I'm just saying that's what they're doing now, ain't it? You get an incurable disease, you have 25 kids, you got your own blood bank, stem cells, you know, a kidney and lung. Liver. Why won't, why won't you give it to your daddy? You know what I'm saying? That's kind of smart, though. I don't know why. Listen like to me. I, kind of look. I man, just tell the kids what they're there for so they don't feel bad when you don't love them. You know what I'm saying? Don't have them thinking that there was a real emotional attachment. You know, ain't that what Nick Cannon doing all them damn babies? Just one of those days, butt crack time you wake up. Watching Donald Duck, be on a truck. It's either making you cry and you need to pacify. My body Barbie's head off. Ask mom for a snack, baby shark attack. Tell you no, not that. Don't want your rock a lay. I want a sucker. It's just one of those days. It's all about the Reese's Pieces. Cool, quick. I think you better get chocolate chip. Or I'll be eating all the catnip. It's all about the Reese's Pieces. Cool, quick. I know you want to dip. And you wonder if, if my aunt can come and babysit. Okay. Hello. It's just one of those days. Mommy. Mommy. The Highly Motivated Merch Store is officially live. Yeah! You will find the link to the store in the description of our channel, as well as in the description of every video. Check out what we've got. We've got some gospel shirts and hats, notebooks. We've got the weird monkeys spinning on a ball. There are so many cool one of a kind designs. Check them out today. Let's get back to the show. Our next clip is on the CIA's search for the Ark of the Covenant. Welcome to Ethiopia, a beautiful country rich in history and mystery, serving as both a cultural and strategic waypoint between Africa and the Middle East. Despite its recent troubled history, this country is believed by many to be the home of one of the most important and sought after supernatural artifacts known to man, the Ark of the Covenant. Researchers and local tradition holds that this sacred relic has been in the Horn of Africa for 3,000 years and is today housed in the town of Aksum. Under the watch of a select group of priests, the Ark's mysterious presence here may come at a price, as these guardians are said to perish young after only a few years of service. Some attribute the illnesses that afflict these men to an unknown power source that could be natural or supernatural, as illustrated in scripture. It's also said that the symptoms that they, that they have are similar to symptoms that people get from being exposed to nuclear radiation. So that's quite interesting. Partly because of this power, it is believed that the hunt for the Ark continues, with influential global players over the past 100 years seeking to acquire it for themselves. For example, from Germany's Heinrich Himmler's search for occult artifacts in the 1930s and 40s, to the traumatic 2020 scenes of unrest in the Horn of Africa, the Ark has played a surprising role in both instances. In the latter, it has been reported that under the cover of the strife between Ethiopia and Eritrea, the Ark was a key target to be stolen and potentially taken abroad. Although Axum has never officially been confirmed by the Church to be the actual home of the Ark, with skeptics saying that 
what the Ethiopians have is little more than an ordinary box. Many significant global events that appear non-anomalous could be considered as part of a broader, ongoing effort by several international organizations to contain, study, and utilize paranormal forces, blurring the line between the natural and supernatural. And when it comes to the Ark of the Covenant in particular, one such international organization that is confirmed to behave this way is the CIA. The CIA. Chapter 1, Project Sunstreak and the Entity. In the early 1990s, American archaeologist Vendel Jones emerged as a controversial figure in the search for the Ark of the Covenant. Armed with ancient texts and biblical lore, Jones claimed to have found evidence pointing to the Ark's resting place near the Dead Sea, just a three-hour drive from my second home, Jordan, with Palestine being the first. By the way, both countries play a significant role in this unfolding mystery. A decade later, in May 2005, reports surfaced that Jones had consulted with Kabbalists, claiming he would discover the Ark within a little over a year. According to a relatively recent article from the Jerusalem Post, the CIA took so much interest in Jones's claim at that time, they actively monitored his archaeological digs to see what he would unearth. But why would the CIA, known for its involvement in real-world espionage and geopolitical strategy, be interested in the activities of a fringe archaeologist many might consider a kook or a crackpot. Well, the CIA has a long history of studying paranormal and anomalous phenomena, often as part of Cold War era research into unconventional intelligence methods. This includes exploring telekinesis, the ability to move objects with the mind, and poltergeist activity as part of broader investigations into global psychic and anomalous events. And of course, most famously, like other global governments, the agency also investigated UFO sightings, particularly during the height of public concern about unidentified aerial phenomena. You know, everything is spiritual. So these UFOs, um, they are connected to the fallen angels, fallen angel technology. Uh, I fully believe that what they have tried to program people to think aliens are are actually just uh interdimensional beings unclean spirits fallen angels etc in an effort to determine their national security implications i mean because think about it think about what ezekiel's wheel how that's described like a UFO would be described. In 1977, Vendel Jones first gained attention for his claims regarding the possible location of the Ark of the Covenant. Shifting attention from Ethiopia's claims of possessing the artifact and inspiring an entire movie franchise, Jones' expeditions throughout the 1980s and 1990s focused on various locations across the Levant. He worked closely with local authorities, conducting excavations and engaging in discussions about the potential hiding place of the Ark. What? This was okay, so am I the only one that didn't know that the Indiana Jones movies were based off a real guy? <laughs> he got on to the CIA's radar. They were not only interested in the Ark for its historical and political significance, but it was also a test subject to expand their research into parapsychological intelligence gathering. And this is where the story gets extremely weird and genuinely creepy. The research into the artifact's location accidentally revealed and possibly confirmed that there are layers to reality some may consider unsettling. You see, according to declassified files released in August 2000, they may not only have succeeded in their mission to locate the artifact, but also stumbled upon something entirely unexpected. 
a powerful and potentially dangerous non-human intelligence. Their agents came into visual contact with several entities resembling beings commonly found in Islamic eschatology and Middle Eastern folklore. And according to their report, these entities were observed destroying any unauthorized individual who attempted to pry open the artifact. Powerful creatures that resembled the jinn. And the jinn is just a devil. Different names from different cultures of the same things. A now leaked CIA report documented paranormal experiments undertaken by its agents to locate the artifact. These experiments were part of Project Sunstreak, an initiative which utilized the psionic abilities of participants to view locations anywhere in the world using only their minds. If you've seen Remote our earlier viewing. episode on the alleged paranormal encounter a U.S. serviceman experienced in 1980s Jordan, you may recognize that another name for Project Sunstreak is Project Stargate. This infamously controversial program sought to assess the effectiveness of remote viewing or seeing distant places in real time using the mind alone. Initially conducting paranormal research with the Stanford Research Institute in the 70s and then the Defense Intelligence Agency in the 80s, the CIA itself has officially recorded some very intriguing, albeit unsettling, results from their search for the Ark that seems to be true, confirming that powerful paranormal forces do exist, some of which may be intimately connected to the artifact itself. The remote viewing sessions revealed that the Ark, referred to as the Target in the declassified report, was possibly located in a Muslim country at the time of the visualization. It was described as being surrounded by Arabic speakers dressed in white, under the guardianship of other individuals or beings, referred to now, as simply- Now, there is talk that the U.S.'s need or want to go into Saudi Arabia had something to do with like a Stargate or something that was underneath um, the palace, one, like either Saddam Hussein's palace or somewhere in Saudi Arabia. And I wonder if they weren't also looking for this Ark of the Covenant. As entities, based on this report alone, entities. the nature of these entities remains unclear. They could be human possibly the same individuals dressed in white but the do you think that the cia would refer to a person that they saw as an entity implication i don't think so is that they were different i.e not human right if that's the case given that we're dealing with an extremely holy artifact that according to lore only the spiritually clean can remain in close proximity to it without being harmed. These so-called quote-unquote entities could only either be good jinn or actual angels, the latter aligning with the famous design of the Ark, which features seraphim angels carved into its artwork. Anyway, another key takeaway from the CIA's report is the possible location of the artifact being within an Arab country, with the remote viewer suggesting it was in an urban area surrounded by mosques, indicated by the domed architecture mentioned in the vision. This places the artifact in one of three likely locations, perhaps Saudi Arabia or Yemen, Petra Jordan or Al Masjid Al Aqsa. However, a counterargument questions whether the CIA's remote viewer was even intimately familiar enough with the Middle East to form such an assumption. They state that the vision might have been of Ethiopia's Aksum churches, and the psychic may have confused Ethiopia's primary language with Arabic. It's a silly proposition, but let's examine it further before we get into the even crazier theory involving Saudi Arabia, Russia, and Antarctica. They state that the domed architecture described in the remote viewer's vision assumed to be mosques, could be mistaken for Ethiopian churches, given the Coptic and Byzantine influences on the country's architecture, which have strong Middle Eastern roots. 
For those unfamiliar with East African and Middle Eastern cultures, like possibly our remote viewer, this could lead to such misidentification. Hmm. So, I wonder if it has something to do with the 12 tribes of Israel being scattered abroad. Assuming that Ethiopia is the location seen in the vision, we then face the question, which Ark was seen? Since many Ethiopian Orthodox churches claim to have replicas of the Ark of the Covenant within them. Right. Well, That's very the true. presence of supernatural entities guarding the specific one, or the target mentioned in the report, supports the idea that the artifact seen by the remote viewer is the original Ark. After all, why would paranormal beings stand guard over a replica? Right, that doesn't make sense. Uh, by the way, and on a side note, this was just one of several examples of the CIA encountering non-human entities in their intelligence gathering experiments. The agency's Are we surprised? Project Gateway, also known as the Gateway Process, involved test subjects undergoing astral projection, where an individual's consciousness was believed to leave their body and travel to other locations. Or yes, they would use a combination of different frequencies and they would um, bring, it, I think, I guess it would make both sides of your brain in sync with each other and put you in um, a different, like your brain waves into a different, I think the dream state, like the theta brain wave, it would, it would make it so that they could astral project within like a few minutes just by listening to these frequencies it would like level your brain into like one like i believe you the same brain waves that you have when you're in deep dream sleep even extra dimensional realms now while participants in these experiments did not report overt face-to-face -face encounters with entities in an overt manner like in the ark of the covenant case study it is inferred that several may have encountered some kind of abstract, higher dimensional beings during their mm. out I'm assuming that they would be the same type of beings that people see when they are doing um, psychedelic type things. I'm trying to say it without really saying it, but you know the one they go to per Peru for and have a shaman and a ceremony. <laughs> trying to be on my best behavior here but there is more to this video at the end of it they do talk about part of a theory that has to do with africa so if you want to watch the rest of it the uh, channel is the mysterious middle east we were helio centricked <laughs>
that must also be remember in the lion king where it had sex in the sky hmm must have been six 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 two their own craftiness oh, and again well. the lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain therefore Lame. let no man glory in men the world is immovable check out one of my recent community posts it's got a list of 200 verses that prove we are on a plane right here he's got first chronicles 1630 psalms 93 1 psalm 96 10 psalm 104 5 and first samuel 2 8 and And recently, I had somebody quote Isaiah 40, 22 to me, and they were using this as a verse to disprove flat earth. So I'm going to read it to you. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in and i told him i said i don't think this proves what you think it does because a plate is a circle but it's also flat it doesn't say the sphere of the earth it says circle those are two different things a sphere is not a circle and it also proves the firmament spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in we live in a closed system now it's time for us to get into the word of god and today we're going to do something a little bit different we are going to read some verses that show us who we are as members of his body and also who jesus christ is so as members of the body of christ the lord calls us his ambassadors now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ's stead be ye reconciled to god we are his joint heirs romans 8 17 and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together we are his co-worker first corinthians 3 9 for we are laborers together with god ye are god's husbandry ye are god's building so we are his co-laborer and we are his building we are sons he is our father and because ye are sons galatians 4 6 god hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father we are also his body for by one first corinthians 12 13 for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be jews or gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit and if you see that is a capital s spirit and there's a baptism there but there's no water we are spiritually baptized into christ's death all right we are stewards of the mysteries first corinthians 4 1 let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ and the stewards of the mysteries of god we are his soldiers. Second Timothy 
2, 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And we are his church. Now this is not a exhaustive list, but these are some of the things that we are as members of his body. So we are his church. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And as members of the body of Christ, we call the Lord the only mediator between God and men only mediator first timothy 2 5 for there is one god and one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus and he is the son of god galatians 4 4 But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. God prepared himself a body. And the fullness of the Godhead lies in Jesus Christ. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3.20, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the head of the body, Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church. So the church is his body. We are the church. We are his body. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence? He is the great God and Savior, Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the propitiation for sin, Romans 3.25, whom God hath sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. He is the living and true God. And we're going to read Thessalonians 1 9. For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. He is our Abba Father, Romans 8 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father and we are also going to read first corinthians 8 6 but to us there is but one god the father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. One God, Father, and Lord, and his name is Jesus Christ. If you have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, no matter when, You can decide to do that right now. And all you need for salvation is faith and trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection. You need 
to know what the gospel for today is. Now, I'm sure the majority of those of you who are watching are familiar with the gospel, but just in case we've got someone new, I'm going to read the gospel before I let you go for today. This is what you need to believe and trust in in order to be saved in our dispensation of grace. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I'll actually go to six. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Now Cephas is Peter. And after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, and some are fallen asleep. I'm going to keep going because this, I'm going to go to eight. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. The last person to see or speak to our risen Lord was the Apostle Paul. He was the one who was given the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret since before the foundations of the world. This is who has the instructions for us in this time of grace. Thank you guys for coming back and hanging out with me once again. <laughs> yeah, boy. I appreciate every single one of you and I love you guys very much. If you made it to the end of today's video, first of all, a round of applause. You are one of the real ones. I want you to put joint air in the comments. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay prayed up and stay highly motivated.